hey, what's up? We need a short day documentary. Now, excuse the background noise. There's a, a, a little bit of construction happening outside, but we need a short day documentary. I mean, Netflix right now have a documentary for Backstreet Boys, how they were exploited back in the 90s. And I'm looking, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at Netflix and I'm thinking, this is a great opportunity for you to give the other side of that. You know, there's a group back in the 80s who were never caught up in that trap. The trap of, here is a shitload of money, uh, we'll sign you into this recording company and then we we'll give you all this shit of money. And then everything after that, we own it, we own you. You sleep, we get money, it's for us. You laugh, we get money, it's for us. You do anything, you cough, we make money, it's for us. They were able to navigate that drama and actually come out on the top. That's Shade. If you don't know what Shade did, Shade, when Shade was coming up in England, they decided now they've become like super big recording companies have not noticed them and they want to sign them. So they went for a company that, that was not very big. And the agreement was that they took very little money and agreed that they would own all their music. They did not sell their soul. They did not sell their skill. They actually agreed on you know, keeping their masters. That's what people like say, keeping, like owning their own music. And that enabled them to later on make a shitload of money and decide, you know, we can stay for 10 years, make music, disappear, stay for 10 more years, make music, disappear, show up after 10 years again, make music, disappear. You know, live actually a good life. And apart from that, let's just be honest to ourselves. Shade was like the most beautiful woman in the world. Why are we not making a documentary about her? I'm not just talking about her beauty. I'm talking about the fact that she came from Nigeria. Her parents were from Nigeria and they moved to England. And you know, as a young girl, what was it like for her? That's a lead singer. Her name is actually Shade Adu. It's Shade Adu. So Shade moving to England, what does that mean? What does that mean for her growing up in that environment? What does that mean for her being a fashion designer? What does that mean for her joining the music industry, becoming a backup singer, then becoming the, the leader of a band, then creating that band, and then deciding you're going to call this band Shade. You know, instead of any other fancy name, you're just going to call that band Shade. And, and, and what was it like navigating the 80s? I mean, what does music mean to her? Because apart, and, and I'll talk about Shade the person, and I'll talk about her impact on me personally, in terms of just being a film person, but during the 80s, how was she able to navigate the drama of the 80s? Everyone in the 80s was on some form of drugs. Where was she during that period? What was she focusing on? And why has she always done that thing of disappearing for 10 years and showing up in the 10 years? You know, I watched some videos of Shade on YouTube and she was talking about... Uh, first of all, she's a very ordinary person and here's the thing. And now I just have to go to Shade the person. I'm sorry. I, I, while, in, while I was growing up, People like myself were falling in love with Maya because of how sexy she was, Beyonce because of how sexy she was, Tony Braxton because of how sexy she was, you know, Rihanna when she, come, she came out because of how sexy she was, Sierra because of how sexy she was. Guess what? Me coming across a Shade video and thinking to myself, wow, what a beautiful woman. Was she sexy? No, there was no sexiness to her. She was just beautiful, genuine in how she was singing, genuine in how she was expressing herself, properly and decently dressed. You know, and I was able to fall in love with that particular character. So just a boo video specifically. Now you switch that for myself. And now after falling in love with the video, falling in love with that character, I go on YouTube and search Shade. And, and I'm coming across all these videos. I'm coming across her interviews. And I'm listening to her interviews. And I realize she has this epic sense of humor. There's a video I saw of her talking about makeup and how she cannot live without makeup. Comes up with this crazy scenario of a burning building and it's one of the funniest thing ever a genuine funny person listen to other interviews of how she just wants to live an ordinary life and she just she doesn't and she just doesn't go into saying oh i just want to live an ordinary life no she actually does that she disappears for 10 years pops up after 10 years there are all these speculation jumping everywhere she's doing what she's doing what but she just keeps quiet disappears pops up again does an epic album disappears again pops up after 10 years, does another epic video. I think that's the epitome of an artist who has lived her life and actually served the industry very well. There's that balance, and that's why I feel that Netflix need to make that documentary, man. You gave Quincy a documentary, why not Shade? 
Anyway, I was still talking about, I know we are everywhere, I was still talking about just how of a beautiful person she was. I mean, the only other person who came close to that was Alicia Keys, but Alicia Keys also went into the sexiness uh, tropes of the 2000s, you know, the mid 2000s and the late 2000s. But Shade was just genuine, she's just beautiful. Let me just put it this way, most of the female artists for young people, young people will have crushes on all these artists, actors who are super sexy, but there are very few artists that you'll fall in love with, and Shade is one of them. It's just that genuine sense of that woman. I mean, even on my Instagram, I usually it's there. I've said I love Shade. I, I'm just like she's like the most awesome person ever. I've never met her. I don't know the kind of person that she is, but there's just that humidity and realness that comes with that particular artist that you don't see anywhere, even in the modern music industry. Now, when it comes down to the technical stuff and how Sweetest Taboo, the video, music video had an impact on me personally in life, apart from just how beautiful Shade was. But the technicalities of that video, Sweetest Taboo is amazing. You know why? If you look at the Matrix, it had a filter, what you guys like to call filter, but on a technical uh, point of view, professionals call it lookup table, loot, which is like a filter that is put on a film to give it one predominant look. Think of the matrix. The matrix is overly green. There's a lot of green everywhere. And, and there's always that green feel about the film. Sweetest Tabu had that. And this movie came out like 10 years, 15 years before the matrix. You need to understand that. It has an, a, a, a lot of orange in it. It has a lot of brown in it. It has a lot of hot colors in it, but predominantly orange. There's so much orange that it feels like it has that loot. It has that filter. Second thing, apart from that, that's the first thing that I noticed that triggered me into trying to look up Shade, try to look up her videos because I noticed that look and I noticed the Matrix did it, then this video did it, but this video came out way before the Matrix. How was that possible? So in the process of going that, I started now to learn about uh, Rule of Third, how you frame a picture, and I accidentally went back to the video and I noticed just how well shot that video is. First of all, you need to understand that back in the back in the 2000s, TV had a different aspect ratio. They were more boxy. Movies looked different because they had when when they came on TV, they had the black bar on top and the black bar in, uh, on the bottom. Now, for me, having watched movies in the past and having enjoyed a lot of movies, the black bar meant cinematic. And so, when I watched the Sweetest Taboo video and I saw those two bars on the top. I was like, this is like the most cinematic. It gave that video such a cinematic look that it had a huge impact on me. Now, I'm not saying that that, that video was the first me to, my, my entry to film, no. I had been watching a lot of movies before. I had been watching a lot of music videos, but I was watching them from the perspective of entertainment. Not all these other technical parts of filmmaking or as a craft or as artistic or as an expression. Because Sweetest Taboo has a weird story, if you watch it. It's basically a love story between two people who are trying to have fun. It's animal or whatever. But then the girl discovers a gun. And, and they don't say anything about that later on. They just leave you there. They love, just leave you with the suspense. So there's a small movie in that. So that triggered me into going into what exactly, how do you treat a story in a movie? Why are all these people during this music video on this side always and if they're not on this side always they're always on this side if you watch the video you notice that they're always on the right or the left strategically placed and even when it's edited out you can see where this character was and then the other edit this character was in the same spot so that got me now in that wheel of uh, a, a beautiful picture an interesting picture and then the silhouette at the end the silhouette with the brightly lit during the day outside and then Shade and the dude and the walls are here and then they come and kiss and then you got, they're all in black but the background is lit very very well. So I, I, I just became more curious. Then uh, during that particular period I, I had also seen Dark City and it had messed my mind up. So I was in that happy place of learning about film. Dark City came out before The Matrix and that city came out before the matrix i did not know that i thought it came after the matrix and i was like this movie copied the matrix then i went did a bit of research and discovered that it came out before the matrix so i was studying that movie when i came across Sutesabu, and that just was the perfect catalyst to now drive me into 
film as a craft, film as, a, as an expression. So we really truly need a Shade documentary. After all is said and done, we need that documentary and we need to also just make young people understand that there was a time that there was like one of the most beautiful women in the world in this particular industry. The 80s was ruled by Shade. You know, all this uh, Ariana Grande, yeah, they are awesome, uh, Dua Lipa, awesome. But there was a time that there was like one of the most beautiful women in the music industry. I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm saying whatever, I'm just saying that because I still maintain that Shade, that 1980s Shade was my idea of what a beautiful woman is supposed to be. So basically that's it. Remember to always watch what you enjoy. Enjoy what you watch. I shall see you on the next one. Adios!